Good evening, everybody. Welcome to stpete.net meetup. Appreciate everybody from joining us. Let me mute that. Uh, appreciate everybody coming out this evening, uh, watching from the safety of your own homes, wherever you might be. Uh, we'll get started in a few minutes. We're going to let everybody join and, and log in and get situated before we get going. Uh, if you if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in in the chat in Twitch. Uh, we'll be monitoring that. How's everybody been doing? It's been a good week for everybody. I mean, I've been having a good week. <clears throat> well, good. <laughs> of course, you're really on your first day of the week, right? That's, you're that's still true. Working the, yeah, four tens. The four tens. It's a beautiful thing. Martin says it's a bit chilly in his house. Stock Todd, so far, so good. <laughs> One of our... Uh, one of our members shared privately that they're enjoying some some rum. That could be nice. Hey, if you don't have anywhere to drive, go for it. Absolutely. <laughs> Again, sorry about the pizza. Um, it should arrive uh, soon. Yeah, in the meantime, we are trying to get some special uh, presentations going. So we've got John Ash from Columbus, Ohio, speaking tonight. Uh, we're trying to firm up some details for the next two months. Uh, so if everybody likes this kind of format, then we'll, we'll continue. If there are any specific talks that you'd like to see, any specific topics, any presenters, uh, if you want to nominate yourself or nominate a coworker, uh, we'd certainly be happy to entertain any and all thoughts. There's a new waiting for the new pier to open. Yeah. When's the new pier going to open? I feel like that's been under construction since I moved here. Oh, or demolition and, and then construction. The one by the um, uh, the museum or whatever art gallery thing. Yep. It's it's already been open for a month and a half. Just nobody's been able to go to it. Hmm. <laughs> Did anybody go get a haircut? Like, just immediately run and, and go get their haircut in? No, I'm actually planning on giving myself another one soon. I'm just I'm just going to let it all hang out until I'm able to leave the house again, which I have a shoulder <laughs> surgery on Monday, and then I can't drive for six weeks. So I'll be, uh, I'll have a ponytail <laughs> and like a three foot long beard by the time it's over yeah I'm hoping to have my surgery scheduled soon so fingers crossed we'll all be out of commission around the same time it'd be great definitely gonna go for the mullet hashtag Clayton mullet yeah that's great <laughs> <laughs> Martin's working on a mullet himself that's good <laughs> Oh, so the pier was supposed to be opened already. Oh, was it? I was just joking. No, you're, you're psycho. I mean, psychic. All right. Uh, it is 7.05. Anyone know of anyone that hasn't joined chat already? Uh, go ahead and, and shoot them an angry email or angry text and say, get on with it. Join and uh, get ready for a great presentation from John Ash. Um, so with that, I'll give a brief introduction. We're going to talk about easy release, Azure, DevOps pipe, Azure DevOps pipelines with release flow from John Ash. So with that, John, take it away. Sure. Um, let's see here. I should probably present this. So it would make it a little, a little bit easier. There we go. Boom. Oh, poo. One second. I broke everything. Uh, did I break everything? Or were you expecting me not to <laughs> present? I You're can, good. I, I broke everything. Don't change a thing. Okay. Oh, well, I didn't. Okay. You, they, you want me to change it three times for you, please? Yeah. Uh, no, just uh, hold on one second. <laughs> it's my fault. 
All right. While well, Clayton deals with a little technical def- difficulties in getting the presentation up in the right place, <coughs> um, I keep changing things last minute. It's... Now you're covering up his picture altogether. Sorry. Yeah, they don't need to see me. Hmm? I wasn't covering up his. Okay, whatever. <laughs> You were saying why? Wow. So we we miss our our, our uh, sponsors for the location and the pizza uh, and the the giveaways. So hopefully we'll have an in person meeting in the coming months, and we'll have plenty of giveaways. Uh, maybe we can talk our barbecue sponsor into bringing in some barbecue. Um, I know that we've got some other sponsors that are interested in helping out the St. Pete.net meetup. Um, so any and all help it would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, please be sure to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, um, be sure to uh, like here on Twitch and uh, watch and share the stream. Um, There's a Facebook group that you can get involved with as well, as well as joining in on the discussion boards on Meetup. So plenty of opportunities uh, to get involved with the group. And if you'd like to get involved by speaking or uh, helping us coordinate any of the the, uh, the meetups and user groups, then we'd certainly enjoy uh, enjoy any and all help that you could provide. All right, I am I am ready and set to go. So, all right, with that, here's John. Ash. All right, all right. So um, I call this uh, easy release, and basically wanted to do a bit of a introduction to. Azure DevOps pipelines and talk about a little thing called release flow, which is um, not really related. It doesn't, you know, you could do that separate from Azure DevOps pipelines. So, um, but it is um, something that I really like. So um, who am I? I I am John Ash. Uh, I'm married. I am a father of three and uh, maybe, maybe there sounds like there's going to be a fourth one on the way potentially here, but uh, I got a seven-year-old, a five-year-old and a two-year-old live here in Columbus, Ohio, I'm co-host of the Six Figure Developer Podcast. And um, I've been a software development consultant for over seven years, um, recently been focusing a lot on DevOps, uh, doing, doing a lot of that sort of um, pretty much uh, strictly. And, and as, as a software consultant, um, I was on a lot, of, a lot of small teams and uh, ended up doing a lot with um, kind of crossing over into the, the, the territory of DevOps at times um, in, in addition to software development. Some of my other interests, you know, cooking, I'm a huge fan of eating. Um, cooking helps me support that eating habit. And uh, I love video games, board games, and pretty much building anything I can. Um, I love building virtually and building with code. I like building with uh, Legos. I like building with the electronics, um, woodworking, and all, all of the above. So, um, uh, you know, if I can if I can build it, it, it's pretty exciting to me. So, what we're going to kind of talk about uh, in this talk is so I'm going to go over some definitions uh, for pipelines and uh, build pipelines and that sort of thing, uh, and then we'll kind of do a quick overview of what Azure DevOps or Azure Pipelines um, provides for us. Uh, then we're going to talk about release flow and the trunk-based uh, branching strategies. We're going to talk about um, what kind of going through how to create um, a build pipeline. Uh, and again, in, in putting this together, I ended up having to keep things pretty basic um, in order to kind of keep everything concise. We're going to talk about a lot of different topics, and um, I couldn't go quite in depth as I wanted to, but. Uh, I think you'll still find it pretty valuable. And then uh, we're going to talk about creating uh, a release pipeline uh, so we can kind of get that end-to-end picture. And then I'm going to touch a little bit on multi-stage pipelines, um, which is a preview feature uh, that Azure Pipelines has right now. So kind of looking into the definitions and terms of things, um, we're going to talk about build pipelines and release pipelines. You know, Maybe I should even include just what is a pipeline. Um, from a developer's perspective, it's a lot like a function. You, you can think of it that way. Um, it takes an input, creates an output, 
and you can chain those inputs and outputs together to create something bigger. Uh, and so a build pipeline is sort of the chain of functions and tasks that basically take in uh, source code and it creates deployable artifacts. Um, release pipelines, they, they take in those deployable artifacts as inputs and they release um, or produce deployed environments. And I'm using a very liberal version of the word produce. Um, this could mean that they actually tear down an existing environment and recreate or recreate an environment uh, from the ground up virtually using infrastructure of code, infrastructure as code. But it also could mean that it takes an existing environment and just simply alters the state of that environment um, to represent the new uh, deployment that we wanted. So there, there, there's a huge range of kind of possibilities with what the release pipeline might, might be able to do. Um, people will, will often talk about CI and CI gets very, is closely tied to a build pipeline. In fact, you probably have heard of the term like CI pipeline usually means the same thing as a build pipeline. But continuous integration itself is really a different thing. It's, it's very similar and it's definitely related, but it, it's the practice of taking all of the small, small batches of changes and sort of continuously bringing them into the development um, branch. And you do that, that continuously instead of all at once. Um, you know, at, at the end of a sprint or at the end of a development cycle and you have a big merge day, probably a lot of people are sort of following some version of this continuous integration already, but uh, having a nice build pipeline really allows us to sort of take advantage of our continuous integration and get sort of continuous builds happening. Um, and then there's the continuous delivery side, which is the practice, practice of automatically deploying an, an artifact or, or basically those deployable artifacts to an environment uh, as soon as that artifact is created. So. Um, there may be some sort of gates or there may be some other checks that, that take place, but there's no need for human in intervention. Once that, once that uh, artifact gets, is, is built, it can be taken and it can be sort of be, be pushed out. Um, and so we often hear the, the term like C, uh, a CD pipeline or release pipeline or something like that. Um, and those, those kind of go hand in hand. So CICD is when we basically take the practice of continuous integration um, and we kind of merge that and bring that together with the practice of continuous delivery. And oftentimes that means, or basically that means that we're going to need to basically take our build pipeline and connect it to our C, our release pipeline. So you often heard the term like CICD pipeline, but that's basically meaning we have a build pipeline and we have a release pipeline. We've kind of connected them together. Um, and that allows us to sort of encompass this whole um, process of getting the code that we that we um, mer merged into our build uh, source code and then creating uh, actual deployment deployed environment at the at the end of it so there's another term um, continuous de uh, deployment that you'll hear and I'm not really going to talk about it too much in in this talk but I kind of wanted to bring it up just because uh, it's a little bit, it's very similar to continuous delivery, uh, but really this is where we take continuous delivery and we kind of extend it to all of our environments all the way to production. Um, so this this means that that artifacts may go through again some gates or some checks or something like that, but there really is no human intervention um, needed from the point that we check in uh, code into our, our source code repository, that code is now going to get turned into executing bits and it's going to be alive in production at some point later on. Now, because it might take some time, we might have a human that comes in and cancels that job, but that should be the odd case. Um, generally speaking, we should know that once we've checked it into the code, it's it's gonna be live. So that that's probably the scariest one for I think for a lot of people. Um, it's also sort of the holy grail for DevOps uh, to be able to get to that pos position because it really means that we have uh, brought the ability to deploy things directly to the the the, the uh, developers and 
um, removed a lot of friction uh, that, that might be holding value back. So um, looking at uh, Azure Pipelines, Azure Pipelines is one of the products or one of the tools inside of the Azure DevOps suite of tools. Um, and it, it's a tool for creating pipelines. Um, so they, they didn't name, name Azure DevOps very, you know, you know, the Azure DevOps suite very well, but I think they got this one pretty well correct, uh, nailed, nailed it on the head. But uh, some of the alternatives that you might, might be using or might hear, hear of, uh, Jenkins, Octopus, Team City, Circle CI, uh, GitLab, um, they may do part or, or all of what Azure Pipelines can do. Um, oh, GitHub Actions, I think, is another, another one. Um, and what you can do is you, you can basically, uh, Azure Pipelines will let you connect to almost all major repository hosts or um, they you have either have like special integration or pretty much can go to like something that's generic. But I would say that it especially works well with if you're connecting to GitHub or especially uh, Azure repos. Um, and this, on the same, yeah. Sorry, uh, A-Rod had a question in chat here. Uh, yeah. So are these builds and releases happening intra-sprint cycle? Just wondering if it could be daily or even more frequently. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, could be daily, could be... Uh, yeah, so these are these releases would be happening pretty much um, based on your time timetables. Um, so these could be very long or very short. It, 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 this is really talking about the ability to have the release and how to have that thing automated. Um, if you want to be able to have something that gets released daily, you're going to have to go in this direction. But so this is sort of the tool that really, these are the tools and things that really enable you to get those fast releases. But there isn't anything that sort of forces you down that, that pigeonhole of having to release so quickly. Um, hope that answers the question. So um, Azure Pipelines can also basically work with a lot of the cloud providers and can deploy to local infrastructure. Um, it works especially well with Azure. So if you're using Azure, uh, I highly recommend checking out Azure Pipelines, um, but you, you don't have to be, right? You, you can, it, it works with a lot of different things. Um, they have Linux, Mac OS, Windows agents. Um, Microsoft does a great job at having hosted agents and I really enjoy the hosted agents there. They work very, very well, but you can, you can also, if you need something specific or special that they don't have, or you'd like to rather, you would rather have that build yourself, um, they offer a self-hosted um, ability as well. Uh, works with most languages. What's pretty cool, uh, if you have an open source project or if you just wanna like practice some things uh, yourself, just make it an open source practice for yourself and you can get 10 free uh, parallel jobs um, and unlimited minutes. So it's really great uh, for, for that sort of thing. Um, if you are working on your team and it's a closed source project, you can also try Azure Pipelines if you want. Um, the first agent they have is free, uh, and I'll put an asterisk there. Uh, you get 1,800 minutes per month, which is probably more than enough. I mean, for, for the most, most of the stuff that I've done, uh, you can get a lot of pipelines running and running well with one free agent for 1,800 minutes per month. The, the, the reason why I even put the asterisk is the first agent, you have to pay for the first agent the moment you want a second agent. So um, that, <laughs> that's, that's the way they, they, um, they do it. So that, that sort of um, Azure Pipelines, uh, and we can kind of go into more details about how to create these build pipelines and the, the release pipelines in a little bit. So one of the things you were kind of asking about was, you know, the timing of producing those releases and how do you, the, you kind of control releases. So this is something to think about if you are, if, as you kind of move in the direction of creating these build pipelines and release pipelines, we want to kind of think about what are the strategies that we're taking and how we're we're bringing work and we're getting work into, um, into our uh, com completed and into our source code and how were we able to like then also release that work from our source code. So 
this is release flow and release flow is a branching strategy that um, Microsoft uses uh, and it's the the team that at um, that makes Azure DevOps um, they they use this methodology um, I don't think there's anything super special about it specifically pretty much any trunk based um, methodology is sort of what I would what I would tend to recommend but uh, it, it, it's a it's a pretty good method of um, managing those releases and uh, and in in a pretty um, non prescriptive way uh, to kind of give you some 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 foundation on how how to kind of set up your your branching strategy. So the fr the first sort of main element of what really what release flow is, is that it's a trunk based development branching strategy. And what that really means is that all of the development happens on a single trunk um, or, you know, main single branch. Um, some people just will use master, but you can, you can name it, whatever you want to name it. doesn't really matter as long as all the development is happening on that same one. And in a small team, you could even have people doing direct pushes straight to master. So maybe you're one and, one or two person team, there really is no reason for you to necessarily need to go to feature branches or anything like that. Um, just push your work straight to master. The moment you get into like three people or basically more than what you could do on a pair programming session, uh, you're gonna start tapping on your toes. Um, and so you want to switch over to something, a scaled version of trunk-based development, which is where you start using those short-lived feature branches. So everyone's doing their own development on feature branches, but those feature branches are always directly coming off of that trunk and they're always being merged or reintegrated back in through like a pull request style um, of integration. So some, some sort of things you wanna keep in mind when you're doing this, you basically always want to try to keep trunk ready for release. So that means making sure that you're not introducing changes that will break the build. Um, one of the things that will help you do once we get that build uh, pipeline going, we can start building our feature branches to make sure that those feature branches actually pass through our pipeline before we even merge them into master. So we can basically go through, do the build. We don't necessarily have to deploy them, but we could to some place. But you know, we can at least like check, does this break the, the, the build? It's sort of like a compile test, right? Um, just making sure. And then we also may be able to be able to do like unit testing and other, and other things um, to kind of basically suss out, is this feature branch good? Um, another thing we won't, don't wanna do is try to break the application functionality. So there's a couple ways you could do that. Again, you can take those feature branches and deploy them into maybe a suite of regression tests uh, an environment that'll that'll be able to do that. Um, you can make sure the developers themselves are checking that. Definitely, ha at at minimum, have an integration step, right, where you automatically deploy once you merge back into that tr that trunk, um, that automatically deploys into an integration, and make sure that that integration box isn't isn't breaking. Um, if you do break it, you need to fix it quickly, right? Uh, you want to keep that pretty much always ready to release. And then you kind of run into this weird, this is where the biggest tension, point of tension is, right? We talked about CD, um, can you, uh, or CI, which was kind of bringing all these small batch, um, we want to continuously be merging our changes back in so that everyone can be working on the latest changes. But we don't want to bring changes in that aren't really complete. So you have to kind of find this right balance where you break the features down into their smallest form. Um, and we want to merge sort of complete forms into, into the master trunk. Um, it doesn't mean that the entire, a lot of times we, we have a tendency to think about features in like the, 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 the total set that we want to achieve. Uh, and what we need to really be thinking about is like, what's the smallest form of that set that I can add without really breaking any of the current um, application functionality um, and adding things in that way. Uh, it's, it's not absolutely necessary, but it does definitely will make your life a lot easier. Um, and code reviews are, you know, with pull requests are, are definitely a, a way to 
ensure that these um, that these things can can be maintained uh, within within a team. So the one of the last pieces for release flow that makes uh, sort of formulates its identity is the idea of branching for release and doing that late. So what what that means is we basically create the branch that's going to sort of define or encapsulate the release of whatever functionality we would do, but we want to do that immediately prior to actually producing the release. So a lot of times, um, like for me and my team, the way I the way I use this is that we we use that creation of that branch to kick off a build that goes and creates the pipeline that actually heads out towards production. <clears throat> and um, depending on how you set this up, you may not actually need a branch. Um, you Maybe a, a tag will be good enough, uh, just pointing out a specific commit. And then in order to fix, if you, if you do have uh, bugs or something like that on branches that you need to create, um, you bring and cherry pick the bug fixes into that branch as opposed to uh, merging or, 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 or actually doing the work on the branch. So again, all the work happens on the trunk. And so when a bug is found in a release, we have to fix that before it makes it out to production. Uh, you can do a cherry pick, you can fix the work in the trunk and then cherry pick that fix to the, to the release branch. Uh, and this allows us to make sure that the bug fix doesn't get um, regressed in the future releases because it's going to be done in the trunk. So when, when we go to commit a new release, that bug fix is already there. But it means that we don't have to ever, and we should never be, taking the release and merging that back into the trunk. Um, it's just an extra risky step that, that we never have to do. Um, because of the way that, that this works. So some of the recommendations, these are not necessarily necessary, but this is some things that I find um, really helps uh, this go fairly smoothly. Making sure that you have single features um, per feature branch. And um, it kind of goes without saying, but making sure that those are single features or bug fixes per pull request. So uh, if, you can, if you can ensure that when you're making that pull request change on master, that that sort of is encapsulating a single feature or a whole thing, then it's a lot easier if we needed to cherry pick that bug fix or cherry pick that, um, that, that commit to one of the release branches. Um, it's a lot easier if it's, if it's just encapsulating that same single feature or that single bug fix. Uh, and, and along with that line, along those lines, I would recommend squashing multi commits when you're actually doing those pull requests. Um, you, no one needs to know that you added and then deleted and then re added and then typoed something else and then re added and then deleted and typoed. We don't need to know all that. What we need to know is how did you get from point A to point B to create that feature or to create that fix? Um, and th that, that's. Um, so squash your, squash your pull request down and occasionally, and this usually means that you didn't follow the recommendations above, usually there's like two features or something like that, but occasionally it is useful to have the, 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 the actual history of those multi commits. Uh, and in that case, I would recommend using a rebase so that you can bring that, that history forward um, in a nice linear fashion without having to add um, merges, which can kind of look, uh, be difficult to, to kind of follow that, that single trunk back. Um, and then last but not least, I keep rolling my wheel. Last but not least, uh, trying to work towards feature flags. Uh, feature flags sort of go hand in hand with a lot of this trunk base um, because it gives you, feature flags give you that ability to release without having to, or deploy without having to release functionality. It's a, it's a great thing, it's a fantastic thing. It isn't necessary. Um, you, can, you can start without feature flags and work towards that. Um, that, that should be where you're, you're going to. This, this accommodates that very, very well, but it isn't something that is necessary. 
So. All right. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is sort of creating that, that build pipeline. So the, if you want to create the build pipeline, there's basically a few steps that you have to take. Um, basically, you, when you're inside of Azure DevOps, you basically tell it, hey, I want to create a new pipeline. And it asks you to follow these three things, or four things. Connect to um, some sort of code, host, code repository that's, that the, that, that's going to be the host for that. You select then that repository that you want from the, from the host. Configure your YAML, and, uh, and you run. And you're done. Obviously, uh, there's there's a little bit more to con you know configure YAML is brushing over a lot of things. So that that's the that's really where the meat of of this is. Uh, and so we'll kind of dig a little bit more deeply into that. When you're you're configuring your YAML um, in Azure Azure uh, Azure DevOps pipelines used to allow you to sort of have this WYSIWYG. Um, methodology of, of going through it, but they seem to have done away with that. So uh, you kind of get three, three different options. Uh, you get a starter pipeline, which is uh, great if you don't have any source code and you just need to get a pipeline ready, but you don't really know what the project's going to completely entail. That gives you something that will run and the pipeline will complete and, and you have basically a uh, blank slate to kind of get started. Um, you can also basically say, hey, I have an existing YAML file. It's already in my repository. It's already in my resource. And this is great for once you've been doing this a while, maybe you have similar projects or you have template generation that's already producing that YAML uh, and it's practically already, already built and all you need, just need to do is get a pipeline set up to run that YAML. That's, it's fantastic. I use this all the time. Works really well. But if you're getting started, um, they have a ton of templates. Uh, for you. And you basically go through those templates and you can say, hey, which of these things am I trying to do? And they'll kind of get you get you started. One, one thing I'll note is that you will probably need to tweak these. Um, this is not like a one click and now you're set up situation in most cases. Um, they do a lot to try to get you get you going and get you where you need to be. But um, in my experience, you will, you'll probably need to go under, you'll need to go to the documentation and say, okay, what, what am I missing? What's missing? So we'll kind of go through that step here a little bit. So I created a, a demo app. You can go to GitHub and I'll share the link with you, with you guys, um, at the end. But, uh, you know, the repo is astron M slash demo dot net app. It's very simple. It's basically the 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 out of the box uh, .NET Core app. When you just say, "Hey, dot, new .NET Core web app," um, and I basically just use it in order to get something that we could deploy, uh, so we could build and we could deploy. And uh, we went and started with the .NET Core template. So I said, "Hey, give me that .NET Core template." And what you see on the right hand side is the YAML that it produces for me. And so what it's giving me out of the box is it's giving me first the trigger and, and it sort of says, hey, we're going to trigger on any changes to master. And then it defined a pool for me, which basically says, hey, we, we want to run on um, Ubuntu latest images. So any jobs that need to be done, go and grab a hosted agent that is called Ubuntu latest and we can run any of our, our build on it. And then we define a, a variable. So if we have multiple steps or multiple jobs throughout this release, we can, we can know, hey, we'll just reuse the same variable. And that way it's, it's uh, the same everywhere and we define it once. If we want to make a change to it, we can make a change to that. Um, as developers, we're very familiar with having variables and, and using those things to abstract out um, you know, good code reuse. So, and then the last thing is it it uses the script task to say, we're going to run the .NET build configuration uh, build command. We're going to pass in a configuration, and we're going to run that. So the script task is just like if I were to pull up the, you know, PowerShell or Bash or whatever, and I ran wanted to build a .NET core project, I could I could just 
go into the directory where the project was and run Donna build um, dash configuration and then say uh, development or release and it would build that automatically for me. So then I can give it a, a display name so that it shows up in an, a nice pleasant way and we'll call it .NET build uh, release. So now we just run and um, yeah, it failed. So what happened was, you know, when I created the project, um, I wrapped that, that project, I put it in its own um, uh, directory. And so when this ran, it looks, it just, it went to the root of my directory and it ran, uh, you know, .NET build. And it said, well, I can't find any projects or solutions or anything. So, um, so it fails. So in order to fix that, we have a couple different options. So the, the easy and quick, quick and dirty way to, to get it fixed is I can come over to this script and I can say, I would like to specify which directory you run the script in. So instead of um, running it in the, uh, just the root of where my um, source code is, it's going to run this in the root plus the demo.net app directory. So, and that works, that works just fine. It, it builds and completes. Um, but I don't necessarily want to fix it that way. So I chose to fix it another way. Um, I, I chose to use the task, the .NET Core CLI task. Uh, this is another task um, that is available to you. And it basically is there to run the .NET um, build script, which some may say, why do it one way or the other? Um, I don't know, I like this way. Um, <laughs> it feels it feels uh, it feels better to me. So, so this is the way I this is the way I, I went about doing it, and um, we use the same sort of display name because uh, we 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 first define the task .NET Core CLI, and then we use the display name, same same syntax as before, same name as before, um, and then we provide the inputs. So. In this particular um, task, there's multiple inputs and there's a lot more than, than what I provided for. Um, you can go look at the documentation and that will show you what, what else you can specify. But the main thing is what command do you wanna run? So I wanna run the build command and then which projects do you wanna run that build for? So way I specified it was use the asterisk asterisk slash asterisk dot csproj, which basically says go in and for all of the, for all of the CS projects that you find um, inside of any folder that you find, uh, go ahead and, and build this for me. And then I wanted to pass in the build configuration and we're gonna build them release just like we, just like we would have in the, in the one before. So uh, that, that works. And this also will get us building the application, the, the, the pipelines run, um, but they're, they're, they're really still not done yet, right? Um, because we, we are just simply compiling the application and what we really need to do is assemble it fully into its, um, the deployable bits. And, and that's really the next step. So the next step we wanna do is we wanna add, after the .NET build, we're gonna say, okay, now we need to run a .NET publish. And so I use the exact same um, task, the .NET Core CLI task, and instead of doing a command that is a build, I mean, this time I'm gonna do a command that's publish, and I want it to make sure that it knows, hey, you should be publishing web projects, this is a web project, you're publishing it. And um, I pass in the, the configuration, um, and I'm passing in the build configuration, again, because .NET publish, if you know .NET publish, um, it runs .NET build before it runs to .NET publish. So it makes the .NET build somewhat redundant um, and, and unneeded, but I, I chose to leave it in there um, because if you, and when you add unit testing, uh, you'll need to run that .NET build before you run that .NET publish. So, because you'll need to have built the artifacts in order to test them. 
The last thing is we're going to put, we're going to basically take the, the output of those published things and we're going to push them into the build artifact staging directory. Now, the build artifact staging directory is a variable that all pipelines have and sort of, uh, and this basically says, hey, this is where we're going to stage any of the artifacts that we build, we're going to put them here. So we can, we can reuse that um, and know that, that that's where those things are going to be. And then it's not something we defined, it's something that's given to us from Azure Pipelines itself. And then we're also telling Publish, hey, you need to zip this up when you're done with it. So even though we put them in the staging directory, the pipeline still doesn't, we, we have them sort of pushed out to that directory, but they're really not accessible to anyone or anything. It really hasn't been fully kind of exposed. So the last step that we need to do is we need to basically add a a pipe public, a pipeline publish task. And that pipeline publish task basically takes and exposes those artifacts and says, hey, this is what we want to uh, be consumed. We want to send this out. And you could have, we could have multiple, we could expose multiple artifacts. Um, in this case, we're just doing one. And it's going to be that zip file that we dropped into the output staging directory. So we're going to use a new task here today. Um, for this step, it's going to be the build, the publish build artifacts um, task. It takes inputs. The inputs are the path that um, basically is to what we're going to publish. And we're saying we're going to take everything that's inside of that artifacts uh, directory, just go ahead and publish those things. And we're going to publish them as a specific name, the name being demo.net app. Um, after the, those get published, then they can basically be manually downloaded uh, or they can be consumed by other pipelines. So we'll, we'll get to that um, a little bit later. So now when we run it, we get a success. Uh, everything builds. It's all good. And we can see, um, you can see here like under the related there is a, it says one published and that's one artifact. If we click on that artifact, we get to this listing of the published artifacts and we can see that there's a, that one artifact called demo.net app and we can download that. And inside of that download is a, um, a zipped up version, which is the actual uh, um, deployed artifacts that, that we built with uh, the pipeline. And then when I took it, I. I downloaded that and I unzipped it. Now we can actually see what was what was built and put into that zip file. And it's the same things that you would use if you were to like if you were doing a web publish or if you were doing um, a manual publish built uh, and kind of pushing that out to to um, to the um, to a to an environment, pushing that web app out. It, it's exactly what we kind of expect. Um, one one kind of uh, piece that I will bring up, which I didn't think about until just now, we are building this on Ubuntu, and so we're using Ubuntu. So when because we're using Ubuntu to build this, we're going to want to run this on Ubuntu, which we which we do. But um, I kind of figured I would call that out. Uh, if you want to build this on Windows, you need to use, you would want to change this to a Windows build agent um, and, and so on. So that, that really sort of is the whole of building our release pipeline and, um, or building the, the, the build pipeline. And I think we'll, we'll move on. We'll keep on moving to to the 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 release pipeline, and then I can go and show the actual uh, Azure DevOps process, the whole pipeline's existing, um, kind of at the very end. So creating the the release pipeline, there's a few more steps. Um, it's it's not it's not so simple, but um, it's it's not it's not too bad. So. The first thing you need to do is you need to sort of select a template. It, it gives you this option to select a template. Um, there's a little bit more of a WYSIWYG um, sort of uh, met method of sort of building up these pipelines. Um, 
you can also start with something that's blank. So uh, Azure gives you a pretty good options as far as like wh which ones you want to pick, but but then um, you have to you have to um, you can you can customize it from there, um, or you can start with something that's blank. So. The other thing you need to do is you need to basically add in your artifacts. So where are those art the artifact sources? Where are those artifacts coming from? Those are the inputs, setting up those inputs. Um, we talked, early, uh, the question earlier was, you know, is there a schedule that you might want to run this thing on? This is sort of where you might define uh, that release schedule here. Uh, if you want something to be on demand, you we can sort of, uh, enable that continuous uh, deployment, but then we can also say, well, we're going to automatically always deploy out every hour, or every two hours, where we can deploy out every two hours if there's something available to deploy, etc. Uh, we can set up a schedule like that to kind of uh, push out these releases. You can also set up a, time, a chronological trigger in your build pipeline as well. I didn't, I didn't talk about that, but uh, you can do that there. Um, then you also need to configure the task, just like in the build pipeline, you have all of these tasks inside of stages that you need to configure. They're, they're really set up very similar, but in the, the, with, with where Azure DevOps is right now, um, you do them through a GUI uh, with the, the release pipelines versus uh, a YAML configuration for through the build pipelines. But most all the tasks that you can get in the build pipelines, you can also you can also use those tasks in the release pipelines and vice versa. So um, it's it's pretty pretty convenient in that regard. Once you have a pipeline created, you'll need to create a release. And then once you have a release, you can then deploy the stages. So those are sort of the general steps walking through creating a, a release pipeline. So here's sort of what I was talking about with selecting a template. Um, you basically start with a template, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, we can import one, so we can actually take any of the release pipelines we we create and we can export them into. Um, I want to say they're YAML. I think they're YAML, but they may not be. Um, we could ba basically export them, and then you can import them um, back in. So, or we can just basically start with something that's empty, and that allows us to sort of build up any of the, the tasks, uh, create as many stages as we want. Any of the tab plus you start with, you can modify completely. Um, you can delete it or whatever. It's just sort of giving you a, a way to, to get going. And from my experience, these templates are, um, especially the ones that integrate with Azure, are a little bit more like exactly what you need as opposed to the build templates. The build templates, I feel like, they get you started, and they do a pretty good job at getting you there. But these release templates are pretty much exactly what you're going to need. Um, there isn't too much fiddling with it, uh, unless you have a very unique situation. So in, in our case, uh, we're just going to do an app service deployment. Uh, we have a web app, and we're just going to use a web app service, an Azure web app service to, to run it. And so we're going to use that first one that's, that's featured right there. The next thing we have to do is sort of pick that source. So there's a lot of different sources. Um, the most common one and the one I'm here to talk about is the basically grabbing that build from the build pipeline. Um, but you can get them from like GitHub. You can get them from um, just like um, uh, Docker, Docker hubs or Docker container registries. Um, you, you can get them from um, source code. Uh, Azure storage, there's there's a bunch of different places where you can uh, basically connect this up to basically pull in those artifacts. Jenkins, so if you have Jenkins and you want you want to connect, Jenkins is a good um, you know, you know build, pipeline for, for doing building, but it doesn't really do the releasing. Um, so if you wanted to wire, use Jenkins because you already have, you're, you've already been using Jenkins to build your artifacts, but you want to actually start publishing them, you could use Azure pipelines to start publishing them and pull them right out of your Jenkins. Um, but in this case, we're going to talk about basically pulling that artifact from the build pipeline we just created. So uh, we select that we're going to be using the type is going to be a, an Azure um, build pipeline. 
and the project that we could we could pull this from a different project if we wanted but we're going to use the same project and the pipeline is just going to be the name of the pipeline we just created um, we want the latest version of that pipeline and then we also have to give it an alias now i just let up let everything be the default that generates because it's good enough for me but if you had uh, a better source alias or something like that 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 you wanted to use you could you can ba basically make use that and anytime you reference needing to pull that information from from the artifact or use the artifacts bits this is what you're going to call it you're going to basically use that source alias to reference that um, another little note that once you create this um, there's a little bit of there's a little a lightning icon and when you click on that lightning icon, that allows you to enable the continuous deployment. Um, and this, this is what gives you the ability to say, anytime that a artifact gets built, now we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and create a release and um, start, start that deployment process. And we also can, it also gives you the ability to do this every time a pull request. So um, kind of a couple different options there. Once you have that pipeline, you'll want to dig into the stages. And <coughs> it starts you with one stage. You can add more stages if you need to. Um, in our situation, we're just going to use one stage. Um, and then we have to sort of, we, it gives us the task. The, in this case, it's a single task. They've wrapped it up really nicely for us. Deploy the apps, app, uh, Azure App Service to an Azure subscription. There was a few things I needed to do in order to get this completed. The, the first thing is I needed to have an Azure subscription, needed to have an app, an Azure app running out there. So I'd gone into the Azure portal to create, to create that app um, and gave it the name Easy Release Pipeline Demo. And I also set up inside of Azure DevOps an Azure DevOps service connection that allowed me to connect to and manage Azure resources. So this basically just means that the Azure DevOps pipelines know how to talk to my Azure uh, subscription account and be able to see what, what resources are out there. <coughs> this is some, some of the, what I was talking about, if you're deploying into Azure, um, they've made it really easy for you. Well, this is sort of how they're, they're able to do that so easily. So in the uh, app service, I basically, um, give it the subscription name, give it the type. Uh, we pick web app on Linux because we were building it on a Linux agent. We need to now run it on a Linux uh, web app. And then um, the app service that we're gonna actually use, so. After that, um, you will have a pipeline created, but you'll need to actually create the first release. So, <clears throat> <coughs> you can manually do that. Um, the release is basically, it's going to basically take a snapshot of that artifact and it's going to say, we can rerun, we can, we can now take that artifact and deploy it through any of the stages or put it through, push it through this pipeline. And we can re-push it through that pipeline as much as we want. But this release is sort of defined by that artifact and the pipeline itself, the build of that pipeline. So it takes a pipeline, a snapshot of the artifact, and this takes a snapshot of that pipeline. If we make changes to the pipeline, we would have to create a new release because the next release, the, the, that those changes wouldn't be integrated into the old release. They would need to be, we'd have to create a whole new release to push it through those, that changed pipeline. Um, this was a concept that was a little bit difficult for me to get gather right at, right at the first time I, I went through it and um, but but quickly understood uh, you know that it, it makes sense um, that the releases are sort of a snapshot a time of point in place of what that pipeline looked like and what that release looked like all right and then once we have a release we can go into that release and we can deploy the stages that might exist in that release. So stages can be redeployed inside of release. We can, we can create new releases and deploy those stages and then come back to an old release and redeploy the stages from an old, re old release allows us to roll back really easily. Um, and those, 
um, stages can be configured to be automatically deployed. So when when a release is created, it will instead of you having to manually deploy that stage, you can go and automatically deploy that stage. Uh, that that stage will just automatically get deployed. And then you can also have various gates. Um, so you could have maybe um, human gates where you need certain folks to actually agree. Yep. This is we all we all agree on deploying to the next stage, or you might have automated things where you have a suite of regression tests or something like that that have to get completed before it moves on to the next stage. So you, there's a di different kinds of um, gates that that can be set up in front of um, a stage. And uh, when you went to the website after that, after we deployed that one, we get a, a successful loading of the basic generic website. So um, we'll show you that here in a second. So the last little thing I wanted to touch on was multi-stage pipelines. Um, and the this is a pre-release feature and it is not sort of enabled by default. You have to go and enable it. I can show you where 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 you need where you can where you need to go in order to enable this. This is really the direction that Azure DevOps is going. Um, and what this does is it takes the the build pipelines and those release pipelines and it brings them down into a single YAML definition. Brings those into um, you know you can you can put that into your source code and there's one place where all of that gets defined. Um, and this is really good. Um, right now, it deploys through environments. Environments are not a pre-release feature, um, but the environments tab only has Kubernetes or virtual machine um, resources. So app services um, and other things don't work, but Kubernetes, the Kubernetes doesn't have to be um, at AKS, so it could be on any Kubernetes uh, services, and the virtual machines don't have to be Azure virtual machine, Azure virtual machines. They can basically be any virtual machine, and actually, physical machines could work as well. So it's just they basically have to be able to run an agent um, and communicate back. <clears throat> so, what what the the way that this the way that multi stage pipelines work is they basically wrap um, the build uh, pipelines and any of the other stages, the same stages that you would have in, in releases today, they kind of bring them together and you have a different release, a different stage for every, um, um, for, for build and then for every, each environment. So, uh, and then that just gets codified in YAML. So the, just like you have in regular releases, uh, a release gets created um, for whatever the pipeline trigger is, um, and whether that's something like a cron trigger, where you're 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 basically specifying every single day or every single night we want to actually we want to trigger this pipeline and maybe make that build and make that release, um, or it might you might be doing it you know per code changes. So when we have a pull request or when we have uh, a branch change, it's going to create that trigger. And then just like in today's releases, you can rerun stages inside of the same given release. So that given that release is taking a snapshot of what the stage looked like and the code looked like at that time, and then you could rerun that. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a great thing to get started in, if, especially if you are working in the environments, um, either Kubernetes or you're, you're using vir virtual machines, um, if that's the way you're doing it. I would recommend um, skipping releases altogether. Releases may be a great way of getting started, um, but go straight to multi-stage pipelines because I think this is where we're going to be going. And I use, we use them um, every single day. We, we do a lot of stuff with Kubernetes, and so uh, it's, it's not feature complete yet, but it is, um, it's the features that are there are complete enough for you to sort of depend on, and it's not, it's not changing under your feet or anything like that. So um, that's pretty good, pretty good stuff. 
So kind of going through a recap of what we talked about, um, talked about what a build and a release pipeline were. We went through some an overview of what Azure Pipelines actually is. We talked about how we can use release flow, release flow and trunk-based uh, strategies to control our releases and kind of avoid that painful merging process. We talked about sort of how to create a basic pipeline, how to create a release pipeline, and basically what multi-staging or multi-stage pipelines can, can bring us. Um, these are some of the resources that I mentioned. Um, the, the, the first one is my GitHub that has the, the demo app. Um, so you can just sort of see, see the, the build and any of the changes I end up making to it in the future. Um, there's a public project. The sec that's the second one is called Easy Release. And you can see the pipelines. You can go and interrogate them and take a look at them. And then um, Easy Release Pipeline Demo is the actual website that it's getting deployed out to. Um, trunkbaseddevelopment.com is a great resource to understand if you want to understand more about trunk-based development and how to do it, how to do it well, what are some of the pitfalls, what, it, what it's not, and so on and so forth. It, it, and then um, this docs.microsoft.com is basically talking about how Microsoft uh, uses release flow today and um, that kind of allows you to sort of understand wh what they're doing with it so uh, and then I also pr provided the link which is the most important link because you'll you will need to go back there but it is very good uh, and that is the uh, basically the docs for pipelines themselves um, all of the tasks are very well documented uh, you can even go to the github resources where the tasks are defined they're open source um, I've had to do that occasionally, um, unfortunately, but uh, for the most part, uh, the, uh, the docs do a great job at um, explaining what, what, what is required, what's available, and what, what tasks um, are necessary. How do, the, how do those work? So uh, any questions, and I'll kind of jump off of this and maybe open up um, the the code and the, the, the pipelines to kind of show what's going on. What did I do with it? Is it right here? Yeah, it's right there. And I loaded the easy release pipeline demo dot Azure websites dot net and took that cold start hit for anybody that wanted to take a look. Sweet. It was slow. Yeah, the cold. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's on the free tier, so <laughs> um. all right. So um this is this is the Azure Pipelines uh, window, and if we go, actually, here's the sort of the first thing we'll see. So, this is the pipeline that already exists. This is the one I created, um, and if we're going to create a new one, you just kind of click on here. So, this is the three things, right? We need to connect to the source code, get what it is, and then configure what what we want to do, which is really the vast majority of the work. And that happens in a sort of iterative process. And then uh, once we get it all created, it will we'll be able to run it. So you can see, basically, you can connect to, oh, no, they just have hit it. Huh. Look at them. I, I went through here. I was going to try to show both of these. But uh, OK, so, so they. I just noticed this one. Uh, link so you can you can if you if you don't want to go through the the YAML which they're really trying to push people towards um, basically using a YAML uh, this will we'll just uh, oh, I don't have any repos github these are this is using that starter pipeline this is using an existing one or basically if we wanted to go through it um, depending on what kind of project we're building, we, we could basically use one of these templates to kind of give us a, a, a start on a YAML. So um, let's do a Docker, build a Docker image. Validate and configure. So they, they basically get, get us started with um, what we would need to be able to build, be building that, that image and uh, pushing it to a repository. Um, but it probably is going to need some extra configuration um, and whatnot. So I don't actually want to save this one. So let's go back. 
pipelines start new. But if you do, if you're a little bit concerned with the YAML, they still have this. I they they've hidden it, but you have to go to that. You have to go to this link here. Uh, use the classic editor, and you can basically do the same thing that we're doing, um, but. Load all repositories. No, this one. Yeah, select. Continue. Um, but we can kind of get a little bit more of a GUI to help to help us sort of configure these things. So this this is building an ASP.NET. What is this? Looks like a .NET actual, um, not a .NET Core. But this is basically all of the the steps that you would need to to do. So we're doing a new get restore. We're going to build it using Visual Studio. We're going to take those files and we're going to archive them. Here we can do some testing with Visual Studio. Now we still need to do that web deploy, uh, which in this case, oh, this this one's actually taking it all the way. So this is doing a build and a, a deployment all in the same in the same boat. And then we can also drop those. Um, if we don't want to do this web deploy, we could we could maybe publish those to that that pipeline. So the process is still pretty pretty close to the same. Um, you just a matter of finding what the right the right tests are. So let's leave this. Go back to pipelines. Um, once we once we have ours, we can look at edit edit because it's a sure. Once it's because it's a um, a, a YAML based, um, we can edit it right here. But it's just this um, code. The preferred way to do it is to edit it in whatever whatever you're using. Um, but they do give you an ability to to actually look at it and to make changes. And then you're just going to be pushing that change back onto master uh, if you if you if you do that. You can then run your pipeline, which allows you to pick whatever branch you want to you want to run with. Um, you can define different variables if there are those things to run, and then um, it'll it will manually create a run. So each one of these things are runs that that happened. You can see this is the first time I pushed it in there. This is the this is where it was running and it was failing to find the the project, so it couldn't do that. So I was like, hey, what's going on? And uh, I get lost here sometimes. There we go. So the next time I tried, I, I was like, OK, well, I need to put this. And I misspelled working directory because typing. And got it corrected. And now it, it worked. So this is, this is using the script method. So then the next time uh, I update it to the .NET task, as opposed to the using the script method, and then um, added in the release. Um, uh, oh, I built it without building release. So then we added in the release argument. And then I added the publish task for .NET publish. And then I added the publish to pi pipeline task. So you can see each one of those changing. You can see how this one has published artifacts. Whereas this one has no artifacts. So even though we ran the .NET publish, um, that sort of was wasted because it it moved all those things into the staging uh, environment, but it didn't actually complete the, the releasing those things and exposing that that uh, information or those those artifacts out. Um, Let's see here. This is this right here is where we want. If we want to enable uh, multi-stage features, you can click on that, and that'll allow you to um, enable those. And then um, this is so. If we come here to releases, this is how we create a. A release pipeline. Um, you can come in here to new release pipeline, 
and this allows you to go through the process picking picking a template um, once you've done that now you have to select artifacts where are those artifacts coming from and this is what I was talking about. You can basically set up the continuous deployment or um, that, that allows you to say, okay, anytime that that Azure pipeline creates a new one, create another release here. So, um, and then we need to go in and actually configure the, the stage tasks That's, that you do that by clicking on, on that. Um, leave. These pipelines. Okay, so once once you have one, then you would have this is your this would be a list of the release pipelines that you have, and then once you select on one, you get all of the different releases that this pipeline has created. So this is one the one the first one I did, uh, and it was another one. We could create another release if we wanted to, um, and go ahead and push it through. So it's going to go ahead and create. I think it will automatically deploy to production here. Yep, it's already started, so um, we'll let that go. But I can dive into this release one and see um, what happened. So I can look at the art artifact that was actually it had used to create this release, or that, that can sort of get snapshotted with this release. And then um, any of the stage, I can redeploy to those stages. I can look at the logs of what happened in in the stage um, when it when it last succeeded. And then if we go back to this, we can see that it's there's a production in progress. And this should, should be completing here pretty quickly. Of course, it was deploying the same, same one. <laughs> Same artifacts that, that went out there. Um, oh, let's see here. Let's go back to our new pipeline. Um, we can edit this pipeline. And this brings us back to the view like we were creating a new one. Um, here I can show this is the actual this is sort of the the tasks that we created if we needed to do additional tasks we just do add and we can add whatever additional tasks that we need to we need to do um, we have access to all of them so if we really needed to build something or whatnot uh, we could do it generally speaking though you want to keep those things separate right that's sort of what makes a build build pipeline release pipeline you might have you can also um, have pipe release pipelines um, depend on multiple artifacts. So we could say, if there's multiple things that needed to get built up, we could have different build uh, pipelines that then all collected into one release pipeline, um, if that was necessary. So that would be a preferred way. But uh, the, the, there's a lot of different, the, the, the main point is that you pretty much have any, any of the tasks that they provide to you. Um, and then these are all just the ones that Microsoft has provided. Uh, you can go to the marketplace and find a bunch more um, tasks uh, that that you can perform here on Azure. The the pipelines. Um, yeah, um, and then the this is very very simple. Uh, it just has the pipeline def definition in it and the application project. So I was trying to do something that would kind of cover the end-to-end -end, um, and, and be a, a place for people to get started. But there's obviously a lot of things that, uh, that as the application gets more complex, you need to be able to handle different things like, um, uh, you know, uh, configuration and you can you can build those into um, your pr you can create parameters for for different staging or um, stages and kind of pass in configurations um, 
that way. There's there's other methodologies of handling that, but um, I think that's that's pretty much it. Uh, do we have any questions that had popped up? I don't see any additional questions right now. So those folks still in chat, still watching, uh, if you've got questions for us or questions for John, be sure to let us know. Freaking Ward says, this was really an awesome demo. He's a rock star. Thank you. Yeah, and feel free, again, this is public, so feel free to poke around, take a look at it. Um, uh, you should be able to see everything that is um, that, that that you need to, and uh, use it as a jumping jumping off point. So, is the is your Azure DevOps instance here? Is this I've not seen one publicly available before. Is this something that people can make changes to, or is it read only? Or um, no, it's pretty much read only. Uh, yeah, they like they would have to. I would have to for, for them to make changes. They would need to be. Um, they would need to be a signed in user and then have the same sort of permissions and whatnot. Oh, speaking of that, that is one other thing I wanted to show. But yeah, they would have to have permissions to to be able to like actually make changes to it. But they should be able to poke around and see it just completely um, everything that's available. So um, this was one of the things. So the when I was initially connecting to the GitHub, to GitHub, it automatically created this uh, GitHub service connection. So this is, it just sort of saved that for me and did that for me automatically. This is the um, Azure Resource Manager connection um, that I needed to create in order to get Azure DevOps to be able to connect to um, Azure and, and do that deployment for me automatically. So. Uh, it's this. There's a couple different ones, and I, this is the one I would recommend you you making. Uh, you create a new one. You could use the Azure Classic, but that's really sort of you should go use this Azure Resource Manager, um, and then do the Service Principal Automatic if it's possible. And it's really pretty easy. You you can ba it basically uses your signed in accounts to sort of look at what subscriptions you have, and then you have to then it it uses like OAuth in order for you to like actually give it um, access. And then if you have the ability to kind of create those, those uh, service connection managers, it will then create one for you. So then it has the knowledge, you don't even have to know about that user. It, it kind of creates the right um, service, you, service account for you. Um, and, and, uh, you, it's the only one who uses that service account. So um, you don't have to worry about like having passwords and resetting, resetting that password and whatnot. It uses and your, your account initially to kind of create those, those service accounts and then it uses those service accounts in the back, background. And what is your password? One, two, three, four, password. Hmm. Oh, wait, I was not supposed to give that out, sorry. And Martin says, uh, now I just need to figure out how to get things working with a click once application so that he doesn't have to do manually deploy or publish. Ah, Be yeah. Because friends don't let friends right click and publish. <laughs> I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the click once or building them out. Otherwise, maybe, maybe I should look into that. It's pretty easy. You just click once. Yeah. This, I can tell you, wasn't a click once. <laughs> and I found your repo, and we have forked it into the stpete.net uh, GitHub account as well. So if anyone has any trouble finding your sample application in GitHub, they can find it on the stpete.net meetup account as well. So any more questions for John before we call it a night? as he quickly scrolls through his deck. Oh, that's only on my screen. You guys can't see that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We've already, already switched back. 
Of course, if he has something else that to, uh, to show based on a question, we'll, we'll switch back to, to where everybody can see a screen. All right. If there are no more questions, last call, then we'll go ahead and call it a night. Wanted to be sure to say thank you for everybody who attended. Thank you for John for putting together this presentation. Uh, will you have the slides available as well? We can make. Yeah, um, I can somewhere. actually put them on the GitHub, maybe. How about yeah, I do that? It's probably a good place for it. All right. Um, so with that, uh, I am John Calloway. That is Clayton Hunt and our guest John Ash this evening. We will be back next month. If you've got any feedback for us, if you like this presentation style, if you like utilizing Twitch and in live streaming, then we'll continue that method. Uh, if you have other suggestions or, or anything you'd like to share with us, please do. Um, we've got a couple of speakers currently tentatively penciled in, so we're going to try to finalize those in the, the coming weeks and days. Um, with that, uh, be sure to check your email, uh, like and subscribe on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, join us on uh, Facebook groups, and join in the discussions on Meetup as well. So with that, we'll see you next month. Thanks, everybody.